Well, hello there, dear viewer. You survived the intro. Congratulations. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is Gandalf. Dear Gandalf. Good to see you. Despite my long-lasting, faithful relationship with this game, I have never made a Gandalf in Skyrim. You could say this build is really late, but you know, as well as I do, that a wizard is never late. I have my reasons for the delay, many reasons. I could bore you to death with those, but instead I am just place a screenshot of me complaining about it in the community tab. You can pause the video and read it if you want to. There is also an entire discussion underneath this post and I am rather happy to say it contains a lot of valuable input. This build is a community effort, guys. Good job. Uh, hopefully. But let's freaking get started with this beautiful old man. The main goal here is to make a Gandalf that would feel and fight, more or less, like the Gandalf from the movies, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, specifically not the OP god from the Hobbit Abomination who conveniently forgets his OP when Endol Guldur, and certainly not the freaking Dragonborn hobo from uh, that Amazon thing. There is a tempest in me. Secondary goals were to make it efficient with as few mods as possible and in 50 levels or less, which is the ancient and respected custom of Skyrim character builders. And this did not go as well as I hoped. The roleplay side is also a little bit of a tough cookie. Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson comes from New Zealand says to me, Sir Ian, I want you to be Gandalf the wizard. And I say to him, you are aware that I am not really a wizard. And he said, yes, I'm aware of that. What I want you to do is to use your acting skills to portray the wizard. Gandalf in the Middle-earth is basically a timeless angel, a being without a simple counterpart in the Elder Scrolls, or at least I don't think we have angels there. However, I thought that maybe his dragonborn destiny can be used for this. Perhaps he isn't just yet another one in a long strain of the dragonborn. Maybe he is an incarnation, say, of Talos himself or another important dragonborn and he is sent back to Mandos specifically to defeat the World Eater as the only single individual in history capable of that. Maybe he's been here in the material plane again for quite some time, centuries even. Maybe he needs all this time to orchestrate a few grand historic events that can enable the return and consequently the defeat of Alduin the World Eater. As such, he will most likely try to reach a ceasefire in the Civil War as soon as possible, help many if not all of the Jarls and all the people of the lands to boost their morale, and obviously he will finish the main quest without too much of sidetracking. Technically, he is not a flashy explosive mage we have come to expect in video games. The only offensive spell he uses regularly, for example, is Ignite, granted to him by that ancient ring of Azidal. He wears uh, mainly to keep it safe, of course. Other than that, there is a few low-level illusion spells, mainly Calm and Fear, to emulate Gandalf's immense psychological impact on friends and foes alike. Later on, when we become Gandalf the White, Stender's aura is used to deal some passive damage in a very suitable way. With a Vokri perk of Sun's Judgment, the aura will damage all kinds of enemies. This stacks with Ignite, which also stacks with itself, so even without much alchemy and without double enchantments, we can make this low-level magic quite effective. Another nice combo of early game spells is to dual cast Ignite on a target a few times and then calm them down with an illusion spell. They will just stand there saying silly things and burning. Pretty effective too. Other than that, Gandalf plays more like a sword and shield character, not a mage, maybe a low magic crusader type. That's on purpose. Middle Earth magic is mostly extremely subtle when compared to what we've come to expect in most video games and many other forms of media, and I wanted to stay true to the original, unlike some TV shows. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. 
This is awful in every way. This right here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. I stay awake, not sleeping, because I'm thinking about this. At any rate, I decided to split the playthrough in two narrative parts. I first played as the Grey Wizard, with very few spells, mainly using a warding staff from a mod and a sword from another mod, which, considering I had to rely on alteration spells for armor, was a little bit of a risky move for the early game, at least on master difficulty. That being said, in the end, we can get Dragon High which is cast automatically for no cost at the start of each combat, which is almost better than armor. The second stage was the White Wizard, which for extra roleplay value I decided to switch to only after a perk was taken in Restoration, which saves you and resurrects you with full HP after you are slain. You will get some extra respect points from me if you can time it with your first fight against Alduin. Unlock the perk just before the fight at the Throat of the World, get dropped to 0 HP, defeat Alduin, proceed to crafting yourself an entirely new set of items with the lovely white robe, of course. At this point, a few more powerful spells can also be introduced. I don't know what would you do with my respect points. I don't think they exchange it for cash or anything, but my respect points actually really don't cause cancer or heart attacks. Wow. Sadly, the low magic mixed playstyle is enabled or greatly improved by quite a few mods, a few more than I initially planned because I discovered full cementum, which means a support beam in Latin, here referring to a magic staff. It is a simplified but well thought through successor to the staves of Skyrim from the good old legendary edition. Basically, it makes it easier to create your own staff by introducing hearthstones to the loot lists in Skyrim proper and by placing a staff enchanter in Whiterun. More importantly though, it introduces shield staves. So items basically that work like shields but look like staves. This is quite perfect for emulating Gandalf's fight style from the movies and also makes a shield and spell build more interesting. Not extremely relevant to this build, but maybe for future builds. As those shield staves have some enchantments enhancing the power of your spells, granting you a free ward and some other goodies, it's rather wonderful. We also use Valkyrie perks here and quite a few of them will make the entire experience smoother, like the aforementioned Sun's Judgment some illusion perks maybe, and in general it may be a little bit annoying without Vokri. Despite my best efforts, some enchantments turned out to be almost necessary to, well, one specific enchantment, Windfall, which is just great for builds requiring an investment in all three attributes. The random chance of healing all three at once has saved my life more than once in the testing, or enabled more spell casting and power attacks than expected. Then I was sure I was done with the mods for this one, but uh, I remembered there was an extremely awesome spell in Advanced Alteration, the Augmented Parry, which sends out a staggering shockwave each time you bash, as long as the spell is active. It seems so perfect to emulate the most epic Big grandpa fight in the history of cinema. But that's it when it comes to mods. Oh no, wait, Odin Magic Overhaul has at least two really helpful spells, Shield of Daybreak, which restores a little bit of your stamina when you block a hit, and Troll's Blood, which increases your health regeneration for a while and so it stacks nicely with the Lady Stone. It also makes Illusion slightly easier to handle. Mind-affecting spells will now have a chance to fail on enemies too high of a level, instead of just always failing on those enemies. But that's it, people, no more mods, that's the last one for sure. Or, uh, except, of course, some fashion mods. Gandalf the Grey is wearing a vanilla grey robe, a blue wizard's hat from Wizard's Hat mod, and sports a simple wooden staff of warding from the aforementioned full cementum, as well as a beautiful glam drink from the good old Lord of the Rings weapons collection. Gandalf the White has the same sword, but he switches to the white priest robes from the white robes. White robes is a rather imperfect mod, and most robes it offers look like uh, uh, a female hygiene utensil, but the priest robes are okay, especially if you break them with a cloak from Cloaks and Capes mod, a fur white cloak to be more 
precise. Yes, a linen cloak would be more accurate, but it clips horribly with the robe, so I decided to winterize my Gandalf a little bit. He also uses a Stalrim shield staff of Necromage, which enhances his restoration spells, as well as guarding him against hostile spells. Oh, and his horse Frost uh, is retextured with Oblivion Horses mod, and if you would like to trample the bad guys with that horse, as you see in the movies, you may need convenient horses, so you may also need a compatibility patch for Oblivion and convenient horses. Ooh, ooh, I guess we can say farewell to that whole minimal modding idea. The standing stone for this Gandalf is the Lady, and yes, Atronach could be a great choice, of course, especially especially considering this scene from the extended cut of Return of the King, but the lady with some extra stamina regeneration is going to fix our attribute management problems, or at least one of them, enabling more power attacks, which is handy because our power attacks are going to cut down our shout cooldown timer. If you remember to take the inner light perk in restoration and pray to Akatosh, you can build up some nice early game magicka regeneration light alongside the lady stamina and health regenerations. The race is the inevitable Breton, this way we can have some spell absorption at least once a day and also get magic resistance allowing us to skip resist magic enchantments even on higher difficulty difficulty levels, especially considered the ward of the shield staff is also going to protect us from hostile spell damage. And the attribute ratio is 1 magicka per 2 health per 2 stamina. As mentioned, most of our spells are dirty cheap, so this should work well enough, especially with those increases to magicka regeneration I just mentioned. So let's take a look at the skills and perks. The main skills are one-handed block restoration, alteration, speech, illusion, and a little bit of distraction and enchanting. That is a lot of skills, but most of them are perked rather lightly. We need just a few perks in one-handed. Most of them do change quite a lot in the playstyle. One rank of overpowering assault to get some defensive value from our sword play, combining nicely with armor spells and the protections of our staff. The Disciplined Fighter for efficient stamina usage and Furious Strength, of course, because it gives you a little bit more damage, especially when you are on full stamina. You may say Decapitating people doesn't really suit Gandalf too well, but unfortunately in Vokri it really makes power attacks significantly more effective and we need to power attack a lot. In Block a few more perks are required, the Bash perks on the right hand branch up to and including Dragon Tail and the perks in the middle up to and including Shield Charge. You may think that Shield Charge is also not the most fitting choice, but the thing is, I really like Shield Charge, and combined with the Force Waves of the Augmented Parry, it provides you with a lot and lot of extremely satisfying and cost-effective crowd control. Quick reflexes should be taken sooner rather than later, as mentioned our armor rating will never be fully satisfying until you can replace it with flat damage reduction of the Dragon Height. Interrupting power attacks may be the difference between life and... Uh, uh, much less life. In Restoration we take the left hand perks all the way up to Respite and the second rank of Sun's Judgment. Sun's Judgment will make our Sun damage spells like Stendra's Aura and Vampire's Bane, which seem suitable for Gandalf the White, deal damage to absolutely everything. As mentioned, the fateful and helpful perk of Intervention, literally resurrecting you once every 30 minutes after a fatal blow is dealt to you, is used as an indicator as to when we switch from the grey to the white wizard. Blessed is not that helpful at all, it's extra 5% of magicka regeneration from the blessing of Akatosh, but every little bit helps and it stacks nicely with the magicka regeneration of the inner light perk. Vigilant Ward, both ranks was also taken, although it may be skipped considering the Dragon Hide spell. Essentially it makes the ward spells reduce 
incoming physical damage, which can be replaced with skillful blocking, bashing and a decent armor spell. Respite is mighty useful for hybrid builds early to mid game when stamina management matters the most, so take it early. Now the Vokri alteration perks are going to be insanely useful as always, especially your Katos preparation. As always, casting your best armor flesh spell at you for free at the start of a fight. This allows you to use the wonderful Dragonhide protection even with our limited supply of magicka. Stability makes Dragonhide last for longer and Sorcerer's Robes make all your spells 25% stronger, so that's actually another 25% duration for Dragonhide. This stacks with the buff to Restoration spell power from the Amplify Restoration enchantment and the 20% Restoration power buff from our beautiful shield staff of the Necromage. All the ranks of Mage armor and magic resistance were taken for convenience, although considering you have a strong ward spell on you every time you block, you may decide to take a bit more risks and maybe be content with only one or two ranks in these two crucial perks. There is the bare minimum of illusion perks in the build just to make low level fear and calm spells effective all the way to the late game. A master of the mind was skipped intentionally. I don't think Gandalf would affect the morale of a Dwemer construct at all. Against the living though, calm can also combine with the ignite as mentioned. It also makes the lamb to the slaughter perk super attractive for this guy. But I thought it would be a little bit too cruel for a Gandalf. In Destruction we only need a few perks to convert Ignite into a crowd control tool and a decent damage dealer. Two ranks of augmented flames, dual casting and impact. Speech is also quite essential, the shout perks are wonderful. Tonal Harmony for instance heals all three of your attributes each time you shout and is available as soon as skill level of 20, so there is no excuse for not taking it early. It is actually wonderful for hybrid characters like this one and also the main reason why we don't use any shout cooldown reduction here because Tonal Harmony actually heals you by the amount equal to the cooldown in seconds. We can however reduce the cooldown after shouting with power attacks once we unlock the Scald perk. We will power attack very fast because Elemental Fury, meaning we don't really need any other cooldown reduction. Speech is also quite appropriate for roleplay. Reasons Gandalf was extremely persuasive. If you're referring to the incident with the dragon, I was barely involved. All I did was give your uncle a little nudge out of the door. Maybe you could add another small mod to your load order? immersive speechcraft. It allows you to interact with NPCs in a variety of interesting ways, including gifts, silly tricks and even convincing them to follow you for a while. Finally, these three perks in enchanting should be good enough for our needs. Extra effect was omitted on purpose. I wanted to rely on combat skills more than on magic, as Gandalf did. Because our staves are actually shields, we have no use for the stuff enhancing Vokri perks here. Enchanting in Skyrim is also rather vile and Gandalf would probably never use it. You can add yet another mod, enchanting services or hold metal and spare yourself all three. Perk points. At any rate, at least we won't be using souls for recharging any items. Shield staves, well, are, are shields, so they need no refilling. And our sword is not enchanted, so it also doesn't need any refilling. Perkless, but high, relatively high smithing skill may also be necessary for master or legendary difficulty levels. For the Grey Wizard stage of the playthrough, we need the following loadout. The unenchanted Glamd Ring, Wooden Shield Staff of Warding, Azidal's Ring of Arcana, and the Regenerate Stamina Boots, Regenerate Magicka Robes, Fortify One-Handed Gloves, and Fortify Magicka Wizard's Hat. Once we are slain and brought back to life by the Intervention Perk, we can start working on our White Wizard gear. Definitely use some Enchanter's Elixirs for this set, 
and make some fort by smithing items if you haven't already to make your sword as strong as possible and eventually we will use these items here. Again an unenchanted glam drink, a Stalrim shield staff of necromage, Azidal ring of arcana again, windfall boots as mentioned in the beginning of the video, amplify restoration robes, fortify one handed gloves and fortify magicka cloak instead of a head item. Very late in the game when magicka is hardly ever a problem you may switch the fortify magicka on your cloak or head item to another instance of amplify restoration or amplify destruction for the ignite spell. For pure efficiency you could replace Azidal's ring with something more, well, efficient. Ignite is an awesome spell but without alchemy it will no longer be as attractive of a choice near level 50 and with the amazing windfall effect restoring around 120 points of magic at random. It's a roleplay choice, on my part I decided to stick with the ring. As it does, ring is something he wants to guard and use when necessary. He considers it a gift from destiny and will hold on to it. If not for the roleplay reasons, I would go with, well, link health and stamina, of course, a great enchantment, increasing your stamina by a quarter of your health and vice versa, your health by a quarter of your stamina, which would really also solve a lot of this hybrid build problems. Here is the humble list of spells, I've mentioned them all of them or most of them already, as well as how and why they are used. So this is basically just a reminder. It is also a decent idea to trigger the augmented parry spell with the Okatos spell trigger from Odin, but we also use a few shouts on a regular. Elemental Fury is Brill with the Scout perk, as mentioned. And the movie Gandalf really spins a lot in combat, so sideways power attacks with elemental fury are just <laughs> spot on, perfect. There is Dragon Rent because uh, we definitely follow the main quest here. Dismay is quite useful for crowd control against the living enemies at least, and of course Unrelenting Force emulates that epic grandpa fight even more than the augmented parry spell. Occasionally slow time was also used, especially early to mid game when our armor rating was subpar and avoiding hits altogether seemed more crucial and necessary. Oh and of course do not forget candlelight, it's, it's extremely important to have the candlelight spell used with this character. If we were to draw a graph of my process, of my method, something like this, Sir Ian, Sir Ian, Sir Ian, action, Wizard, you shall not pass, cut! Sir Ian, Sir Ian, Sir Ian. Okay, so what a ride this has been. Uh, this is actually a Gandalf to me, a real proper Gandalf, as, as good as I can make it at least. He can go through a whole dungeon without casting a single spell, if that's what he wants, and that is what the original Gandalf would do, most cases at least. If the enemies are dangerous or vile enough, he will become even more dangerous himself, with some highly effective spell usage. Pity I wasn't able to make it work with less modding though, that it's, it's, it's a little bit of a shame. But my main regret is now that this journey is over and I will never again be able to make a Gandalf in Skyrim for the first time. Huh. Not all tears. Remember to share, like and subscribe to your viewer. It makes the channel grow and makes me make more excellent builds. We will see each other again. Ebony not ebony, not ebony at all, not ebony, stalrim, which is cast automatically with no co coast, with no fucking coast. Other than that, there is a few low-level illusion spells, mainly come, come, mainly, mainly come. Mm -hmm. Sure, belly, sure, mainly, it's mainly about come and... Ah. Jesus Christ.